What I want to talk to the group today was about how to get a business ready to sell for the best price and the uh, quickest possible fashion. Now, probably the most important thing for any business really comes down to the lease. Any, anything that the group has that suggestion of what's really important to have in a lease if you're trying to sell your business. Orange options. Oranges. <laughs> okay. Oranges. So I'll address uh, Patrick's question, which is option terms. Let's say you're buying a retail business. The lease expires next year, and the business is worth $500,000. Are you going to buy that business? Well, only if you can get a longer term, because if you only have one year left in your lease and your landlord decides you don't, he doesn't want that business there anymore, you're gone, and your $500,000 you invested is gone. Okay, so if you're getting ready to sell your business, it's very important to have a long-term lease. So get additional option terms or extend your current lease. Another thing to consider is also a lease assignment clause. Any idea what a lease assignment clause is? Patrick? Uh, somebody else can take over the lease. Exactly. So when you sign a lease, it's basically personal to you or your corporation. And it's important when you're negotiating a lease up front to make sure that you have a clause in there that allows you to assign the lease to another buyer. If you don't have that clause, then you have a big, you're under over a barrel by your landlord. So your landlord can say, no, I don't want to do it, and you're stuck. So one important other thing to consider about the lease assignment clause is the fact that is there a consideration for it? A lot of times landlords will put in fees of $500 to $1,000, maybe $2,000 to cover their costs and processing in the application. Those costs are somewhat reasonable. It's just when you want to watch out for when that cost comes to about ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. That's the landlord trying to gouge you a little bit. So a quick question to the group. If you're per se looking for a business, what would be the number one thing on your mind that you want to know about that business? Profitability. How much is making, exactly. So we'll discuss this. That's the first part we want to cover today. So, if you're getting a business ready to sell, what do you want to do? Lower costs and raise revenue. Lower costs, raise revenue. Number one thing people do with businesses is there's a lot of fringe benefits. Write-offs, for example. Maybe you have a nanny that you have at your home, domestic nanny that's on payroll. Well, <laughs> it's great to have an company payroll, but he or she really shouldn't be there. And if it's on your payroll, it's dragging your profit down, which is not making you profit high enough to get the price you're looking for. Okay. So let me ask our commercial banker, Mark, along with a question here. If you were looking at a business and somebody wanted to buy it, and you're looking at three years tax returns, which kind of trend would you want to see on the revenues and profit? An upward trend? Exactly, an <laughs> upward trend. So for those people that you know that are in business that are thinking about selling soon, maybe in the next couple of years, if you can get me in front of them, that'd be really helpful. So what I'm going to tell them is to, hey, if you've been writing off a lot of stuff, stop doing it now because you need to show the profit. If you hide the profit, you can't get the sales price. Does anybody know what the form, IRS form 4506 is? Okay, the three that I thought. Okay, Denise, go ahead. Um, it's a form that will verify your taxes. So it goes through the IRS, they verify that you did your taxes and the amounts that were um, that were deducted on your taxes will show up there as well. Correct. So what is used for by commercial bankers is when you take your business and you have a buyer that takes it to a bank to get third party financing, if you try to pass off some phony tax returns, the bank's going to find out and you're going to be caught in some fraud, which is obviously some bad news. So again, the key is to really do your books properly to make sure you're showing all of your profit. If you were looking at two different businesses and one had a lot of extra inventory, and the same profit as another business that had a lot less inventory. Which one would be more valuable? Less inventory. Less inventory, correct. What inventory essentially is is dead money sitting. So you want to have a high turn on your inventory. So if you have a business profit $200,000 with a million dollars in inventory sitting at any given time, that's basically a five times annual turn. That's too slow. If you have the same business that has $200,000 annual profit but only has $400,000 in inventory at any given time, that's basically a uh, three times faster term, which is much better. And so as a buyer, you have to come with a lot less money up front to buy that business because the price plus inventory is a lot less. It's $600,000 difference in that example. 
So one of the things you want to do if you have a business is to basically either clear out that inventory, liquidate it for whatever you're going to get for it. So it's not going to be any use to you. It's just taking up extra space and making it less attractive to buyers. When you sign a lease, either yourself, personally, or through a corporation, typically a landlord wants to guarantee that you're going to make payments on that in case your business doesn't work out. So how they get that is a personal guarantee. And essentially, that's where you pledge all of your personal assets in case your business failed. If the landlord can come back, collect from your house, collect from your CDs, whatever you have, and get that money. So if you're opening a business now and you're negotiating a lease, you always want to make sure you try to negotiate an assignment clause that allows you to escape and no longer be a guarantor to lease when your buyer takes over. And bonus question for everybody, if you have a C-Corp business, or if you own your business through a C-Corp or you own your business through an S-Corp, when you sell, are you going to pay more or less tax with the C or S-Corp? A lot more with the C. A lot more with the C. So is there anything you can do about that to minimize that grade? I'll ask your CPA if you can make an S election okay. if you are a C corp. That's definitely one option which involves a little bit of a time frame. So if you S elect today, they make you go back in the past. One thing you can do if you don't want to try to do the S election is to also consider if you're the founder of the business, it's called the Martin Ice Cream Strategy, which is case law, or also known as the personal goodwill. If you're the founder of the business and you sell your business, you can have part of the purchase price be through the corporation and the other part through the personal goodwill you created as the founder of the business. And with that, I'm going to open up the questions. Julie? Um, I see here on your sheet here that you do business valuations. Correct. So you help companies value the, the business for to sell, but for my purposes would be to sell key on life insurance. Correct. Do you do that? Yes. Yes, it's a, and that's where, again, profit is so important. If you want to show a high amount of profit, you're going to have a high valuation. That's important to you, and obviously when you're selling, it's important. Right. You want to minimize your expenses. What can we uh, look for for you? How do we recognize somebody who might be wanting to sell their business who doesn't stand on the mountaintop and says, I want to sell my business? Uh, some key things to look for are somebody that's maybe looking pretty burned out or tired. Typically, they're just hanging out, hanging around. They don't know they have any options. Uh, also, if somebody's complaining about their landlord, maybe they're frustrated, I can come in and help renegotiate their lease. That's, again, favorable terms, which means, again, more sellable to the buyer. German? I don't support the giving of the land as well. Yes. Typically, it's when it's a package deal. So if you own the property and the business, you have two choices. You can sell the business and then lease the property back to your buyer, or you can sell the whole package depending on your retirement goals or whatever your goals are financially. And I do do both in those cases. Deborah? Out of time, so everyone will have to have a one. All right, thank you.